So it's all over, the Walking Dead finale has now been and gone, but did it deliver? This last episode was a longer episode than usual as it clocked in at just over one hour, but it did have quite a lot to fit in. The episode begins with Daryl getting knocked out by some Commonwealth soldiers who just leave him for dead. And then Judith wakes up with a burst of energy to block off the door from the walkers, and then we cut to the opening credits. And with these being the final opening credits, I did amp up the music a bit to make you really feel like this is the last episode. We then waste no time at all as we see Luke and his girlfriend, who's apparently called Jules, get taken down by walkers. And in regards to Luke, we did see that promo picture of him on the floor, so this was to be expected. We then jump ahead in time a little bit to the hospital to see Daryl's been bandaged up. We see Carol there as well, and also Luke on the table saying his last words to Magnus Group. And yes, yeah, seeing the four of them cry over Luke was quite emotional, but the death itself wasn't really that impactful, unfortunately. Daryl decides to give his blood to Judith because apparently his blood goes with anybody as Mill used to sell his blood for money, which did crack a little bit of a laugh for me because I was just sort of imagining you know, Mill sort of pimping him out for his blood. We then see Princess and Max break Mercer out from his cell, and then what follows that is our customary Negan peering over Maggie scene. Aaron and Lydia join up with Ezekiel and that group and head off to the hospital. And then we cut across town to see Rosita, Gabriel and Eugene storm the house to rescue Coco and Rosita goes full on John Wick. While Judith panics about possibly dying, she reveals that her mum is looking for her dad, which of course reveals to Daryl that Michonne is looking for Rick. And then some bloody randomer tries to go through the front door of the hospital where all the walkers are, and gets, you know, no surprise, eaten, and then we have one of the walkers with a rock bash through the window, and in they come. So we have that group trying to find an exit, and we also have Eugene's group as well trying to find one too, as they climb up a pipe. But Rosita falls into the horde of walkers who luckily for her aren't overly peckish as she gets up and smacks a few in the face, gets on the truck and jumps into the window. Night falls and we see our groups come together as we see Judith get some treatment from Tony and we also see Aaron and Lily have a conversation regarding her arm. Also I was very happy that Daryl called Judith a little ass kicker and Judith replied big ass kicker. Negan then takes Maggie's rifle to take down Pamela himself but Maggie stops him in his tracks and Negan then apologises to Maggie about what happened with Glenn. We then get quite a sweet scene between Eugene and Rosita, as Rosita is sort of being quite quiet, looking at Coco a lot, and we do find out that she did get bit when she fell. Eugene also mentions about taking Coco for swimming at Oceanside in the summer, and with Oceanside, they never really mentioned what happened there overall in the whole episode, so with that, it's sort of just left there hanging, a little bit like Virgil and a little bit like Heath, they're just sort of left on the side. To Pamela Milton now, we see her looking at the gate with her citizens begging to get in. But Mercer and the survivors approach Pamela and the soldiers, with Daryl speaking to Pamela and telling her exactly how it is, and saying, we ain't the walking dead. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. Instead of killing Pamela, they place her under arrest. They open the gates and let people in, which also includes Elijah and Jerry. Now the walkers on the gate, which includes a Hornsby walker as well, Pamela approaches said gate to try and kill herself. Uh, Judith tries to speak her out of it as well. I don't know why Judith is there actually. She should be getting treatment. But anyway, she's there as well. But then Maggie shoots that walker of Hornsby and uh, Pamela goes to prison. Also, I can't forget to mention what happened to that walker of the knife. It never really got paid off. To get rid of the walkers, they do some old fashioned cold zombie training and get them all to go to the estate. And then they blow them up. And for Walking Dead standards, I thought that did look pretty good, actually. I mean, who can forget that lovely deer? We then have a final shot of Pamela in the cell, and Carol gives her a little bit of the side eye. Following this, we get a conversation between Maggie and Negan, where Maggie explains that she wants to remember Glenn and his smile, and we're looking at Negan, she just remembers that night of him getting killed. We then see our group have a celebratory dinner, which does look pretty good, by the way. And we also see Dog. Oh my goodness, Dog. I was so happy to see Dog. Fleetwood Mac's song Landslide is playing in the background and I think that's a great song for The Walking Dead. It's also a pretty good song in many different scenes. I mean, we even saw in South Park, for example, but you can use that song for great effect. To the you were sticking these in your ass, Carmen! No! Magna kisses Yumiko and lets that do the talking and I gotta say with Magna, she's a character who never really got a time to shine. You know, with the rest of her group, they had their moments, but with her, she is probably the weakest character of the lot. Luckily for Rosita, she has a big window before she turns as she speaks to Gabriel and tells him the news. And then we get a touching scene with Rosita on her deathbed as she kisses her daughter Coco, speaks with Gabriel, speaks with Eugene, and eventually dies. And with Rosita, she's been in the show since season 4, can you believe it? And you know, she's had her ups and downs, but overall, she's been quite a solid main character. And I think with Christian, who plays her, she's a really fun actress and one of the most underrated ones in the whole show, I think, as well. So yeah, I thought this was a really well done uh, death scene as well, and, and overall, a great character. And then as we jump one year forward, we see that Eugene and Max actually named their daughter after Rosita and called her Rosie. And as predicted, Ezekiel has now taken over as governor, with Mercer as lieutenant governor. And we also learn that Carol, who's gone back to her old haircut, has taken over Hornsby's job. In this part of the episode, you have a lot of what you'd expect, a lot of conclusive conversations, some hugs and all that sort of thing. 
and not forgetting Daryl's doughy-eyed look to Connie. With that, of course, there's a lot of emotion flying around. I thought that scene with uh, Judith getting the package from Negan was quite lovely. Also, the scene with uh, Daryl and Carol on the bench where Carol says to Daryl that he's her best friend. I thought that was really nice as well. And a lot of it as well was helped by the music. I thought the music was really on point in this finale. Maggie says to Carol and Daryl that there's a lot out there to find out about. And so Daryl goes off alone on his bike and I guess we'll have to find out in the show how he gets to Paris. And in terms of Maggie and Negan's spin-off Dead City, there wasn't really that much set up at all apart from what she just said. So I guess we'll have to see in the show how that all comes to be because I'm still not really convinced how she and Negan go somewhere together on their own. But in this episode we didn't see Annie at all or in the future we didn't see Annie and Negan's child either so I'm guessing they're leaving that for the start of that show. And then in the last part of the episode we see Michonne and Rick both writing messages and as they overlap with each other we see images of people we've lost along the way. And I don't know about you but I was looking out for T-Dog and he was there. In regards to when these scenes are actually set, Rick's portion is set in the past as we see him throw the bag onto the boat which Michonne later finds. We're not exactly sure when this takes place for Michonne but she does have some pretty cool armour. And of course with Rick starting the show as officer friendly and now ending the show with his hands up being told to surrender, I thought that was quite fitting. And we thought he might have the last line of we're the ones who live but it's actually Judith who has the final line in the show and again I thought that was quite nice to have the future be the one who ends it. So yeah, overall, I thought this was a mixed bag of a finale. Like, we had some really good emotional scenes, especially with Rosita and, of course, with Rick and Michonne at the end. But I thought, overall, it was quite rushed. Especially in terms of the Pamela Milton stuff, I thought that was going to be a lot more dramatic. But they kind of just turned up and told her that was it, and then that is it. There's definitely a handful of cheesy moments and times where you're just sort of questioning, like, what the hell, what, how does this happen? But I think for a show where the story's not actually ending, this was a fine enough finale. I think for long-time fans, there's enough in here where you'll be satisfied, but also excited for the Rick and Michonne stuff. I'm not so sure about the Daryl and, and, and Negan and Maggie show. I think with those two, I'm a bit like, oh, I'll watch it probably. But with the Rick and Michonne one, that's the one I've really got excitement for. I think with season 11, it's one of the weakest seasons. But what we'll do is rank all 11 seasons very soon in the video. But yeah, with The Walking Dead, it's been one of my favourite shows I've watched. I think in later seasons, the quality's dipped a bit. But, you know, from season 1 to season 6, it was really good. And I think it's one of those, well, you know, watched episodes over and over again. The ending of the show has left me satisfied enough. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And we will be covering the spin-off. So if you do want to see our thoughts on those when they come out, make sure to subscribe. But until then, on screen right now is a video which YouTube are recommending for you.